Hello again. In this capture channel video, we're going to talk about uh, in detail fixing and mostly improving this uh, subwoofer from BMW. Uh, in the first video, which I'll put a link below, I went into a general description how I was going to do it. Uh, in this one, we will actually see me do the actual work. Uh, uh, basically, uh, this subwoofer had a couple problems. One day, not, not working at all first, and which I managed to solve by replacing the amplifier board. <coughs> I was able to source the, the board from uh, uh, just uh, from Parts Express actually, and there's some links to it on eBay. Uh, very often, manufacturers use a very generic board. In this one, they're using an Ice Power uh, 45, which you could find uh, in quite a few places. Um, the other part is I worked on improving the subwoofer because it was lacking in quite a few areas and um, you'll see that uh, in detail in this video. Hope you enjoy it. So just four different screws, you pop the plate out, uh, disengage the speaker uh, connection and you've got the uh, plate here at hand. And, uh, uh, before I start fixing, I just try to wonder about the construction of it. So, some plastic basically. So this is what's sealing the back of it. Uh, I mean, it's okay, but really, because uh, the plate is perforated for uh, for uh, uh, to get the air through and to cool it down. So really, that's not holding the sound. So we're relying on on this piece of plastic. And that's really not going to do it for a subwoofer. First we're going to take the wire out of this so we can mount uh, uh, the wood. And so these usually you have to push on them down and then you pull. It should come out. There you go. So number one. I just uh, realized something that the wire, speaker wire is actually not soldered to the driver. It's just Pull, push button, push uh, you know, connectors. That's, if you ever see those, the first thing you do is replace them. Just get a wire and solder them instead. You really do not want those rattling inside. And basically, you need to squeeze this tight, give it a couple of twists, and it should come out. Here it goes. Now we mounted the uh, cover on the wood. This is the uh, Acoustics products I'm using. It's kind of, it's kind of consistency like uh, like yogurt almost, and uh, it's very lumpy. So you basically, it's pretty simple. You just put a little bit on the brush and brush away. There's nothing you can go wrong here. Uh, you want to keep it it's very thick, like about five, six layers of regular paint, but not huge lumps because that'll take a long time to dry. Not a big deal, but it just takes more time to dry. So we just coat it. Usually I do it uh, twice. Do it once and then wait a day and then do a little, another coat the second time. And that works well. Uh, like I said earlier, this is not the only way to, there's many ways to uh, to do things, there's uh, various products you can attach on the inside. Uh, ideally you want two things, you want to be as stiff as possible, so bracing is number one issue. Uh, in my case it was pretty well braced, it's a pretty small subwoofer, so it's not a lot of flexing here. This is the uh, Acoustex after it has dried, just to give you an idea of uh, how much. So I usually put, like I said, two layers. So you need to have a little bit of a thickness to make a, to make a, an effect. And uh, if you want it to dry faster, if you put a fan on it, 
it will dry really quick in a couple of hours instead of a day or two. Much better. It doesn't ring as much as before. I just gotta solder all these uh, the crimp uh, connection to the speaker. This will be a lot much better. So I painted the wood cover, I also glued it with uh, construction glue, PL Premium and screwed it, it's super tight. There is no reason to access anything from here anymore because you can access stuff from the front by removing the driver. And uh, I also painted it black, so this is uh, it's not going to rattle or move anymore. Um, the cover, I put some perforations, quite a few here, here so air will flow from inside from underneath to the top. That should reduce the possibility of it, of the board uh, burning again. So we're gonna put this in here and then the plate will, will go back in here. And we're gonna glue it back there. connected the uh, speaker here, just putting it back, back in place. Turn all the screws back in. So what we achieved here is a couple of things. So this is going to remain cooler. I mean, yes, there's little holes here, but now there's flow from the inside, from the bottom to the top, and that should keep it much cooler and reduce the possibility of it burning again. Uh, the other thing is it's no longer inside being hammered by the vibrations. And third thing, we gave the volume a little bit more room inside, so we should have a slightly uh, deeper base. Uh, if you don't, uh, it actually looks pretty nice. If you don't like this look and you really want it compact as it was, you just put it back the way, the way it was and it uh, wasn't much harm done. I would probably then in that case reinforce the plastic, put some material to uh, some plastic material uh, to cover it, maybe some more acoustics as well and stuff like that to keep it less uh, vibration as possible. In my case I opted to make the volume a little bit bigger and keep the amplifier a lot cooler. This way I'm not going to have it burning again on me. So, so uh, this is the front. So as you can see it looks great. You don't see much of the back in any ways. And uh, hopefully you like this video. If you like it, uh, please subscribe and give me some thumbs up. And hopefully we'll see you in another video.